Hello everyone, my name is Wef Bowser and welcome to a Normie's Guide to Pyramid Head, also known as the Executioner in Dead by Daylight. This is the first time I made a video like this, so let me know how it goes. I'm not the most experienced person at the game, but I feel like I'm uh, qualified enough to make a video like this. But if anyone better at the game has a second opinion, let me know. But without further ado, let's get to the Pyramid Boy. So first off, let's go over his stats. He has the standard 100% movement speed and 32 meter terror radius, as most other killers. Basic stuff, nothing special there. What is special is his power. It's a bit of a doozy to read, so I'll try to make it as simple as possible. There are a few parts to this power. The first part is his rights of judgment. While holding the active ability button, Pyramid Head will carve a trail into the ground. While using this ability, Pyramid Head will slow down to 100% speed, or 110% speed, sorry, until the ability is no longer in use. But this trail persists for a long time, so long as the trail isn't too close to a generator, hook, or exit gate. Survivors who pass over this trail will, will suffer from the Torment debuff and will alert Pyramid Head with Killer Instinct unless they crouch over this trail. We'll come back to it later, since it's connected to later parts of his power. The second part of his power is his ranged attack, Punishment of the Damned. While performing Rites of Judgment, using your melee attack will instead cast a shockwave-like trail. Survivors hit by this will receive damage from this attack, but it will not count as a standard hit, so stuff like Franklin's Demise and such won't work. The wave has an 8 meter range at base and will ignore any obstacle in its path. This attack is most useful for punishing vaults and pallet drops, but you can sometimes use it to surprise people on generators if they are not paying attention. Next up is his Cage of Atonement. Upon downing a survivor suffering from torment, you can choose to send them to the Cage of Atonement, which is essentially an alternate version of a hook, but it does not trigger hook-related perks like Pop Goes the Weasel and Decisive Strike, for example. The Cage also requires survivors to hit skill checks in Phase 2 instead of the usual spamming space to struggle like a normal hook. The survivor will always be sent to the farthest cage from Pyramid Head that is not currently occupied. Pyramid Head cannot see the aura of this cage and the cage will respawn somewhere else with the survivor still in it if he gets too close to the cage. But these cages do spawn in similar spots as jigsaw boxes and cleansing fountains from the plague so map awareness will help. Also, if a survivor is rescued from the cage, both the survivor and the person rescuing them will no longer be affected by torment until the next time they trip rites of judgment. Last is his final judgment. If a downed survivor is inflicted with torment and they are on their last hook, instead of sending them to the cage, you will get a prompt to use final judgment. Using final judgment will perform a quick Mori animation and kill the survivor on the spot with a quick cleave to the back. For perks, our Pyramid Boy has three teachable perks. Forced Penance, Trail of Torment, and Deathbound. Forced Penance inflicts the broken status effect on survivors that take a protection hit. This is generally his weakest perk, since survivors normally do not find the need to heal immediately after taking a protection hit, especially with insta-heals out of the game. Trail of Torment gives you the undetectable status effect after kicking a generator, and highlights the generator you just kicked while the perk is in effect before going into a cooldown. This is also not a fantastic perk because highlight the generator being highlighted does kind of give you away. Deathbound causes a survivor to scream after healing another survivor, and inflicts them with the oblivious status effect if they leave a certain radius from the healed survivor. This is also not a good perk because survivors are usually on the opposite side of the map when it triggers, but even if they aren't, Nurse's Calling outclasses it by a lot. This killer doesn't have great perks, so you should, you should ignore them. So anyways, the perk build I use on this killer is Franklin's Demise, Monitor and Abuse, Sloppy Butcherer, and Hex Ruin. Franklin's Demise is a good anti-item perk, especially with its rework coming up soon. 
It forces survivors to drop items, and that's always good. Because you don't want to deal with stuff like flashlights, say, you know. Monitor and abuse is good for reducing your terror radius so you can get closer to start a chase. And also a bigger terror radius when you are in a chase. Which is good when paired with stuff like infectious fright, and I'll talk about that in a moment. Sloppy Butcher is good for delaying healing, but it's more of a stand-in perk for other perks because I don't have a lot of perks. Saying perks a lot. And Hex Ruin is good for saving time at Jin since you don't need to worry about kicking the generators while the Hex persists. Other perks I'd recommend are Infectious Fright since you can start chasing another survivor right after caging somebody. Especially with Monitor and Abuse with the larger terror radius while you're chasing someone. And surveillance paired with hex ruin for insane mat knowledge. You can also use I'm all ears since this helps you punish vaults with punishment of the damned. So Pyramid Head has a variety of add-ons, and there's really only a couple you want to be worried about. And that would be the range add-ons for punishment of the damned, increased total use time for rights of judgment, and increased duration the rights of judgment persist in the environment. Most of the purple add-ons just inflict debuffs that aren't really impactful in the match, so don't take those. Except for Scarlet Egg. Scarlet Egg is okay. The ultra rare add-ons aren't too huge either. The Seal of Metatron reveals the auras of survivors inflicted with torment when sending someone to the Cage of Atonement. There aren't many times where more than one survivor is affected by torment, so it's not a huge boost. The Obsidian Goblet grants you the undetectable status effect while traversing Rites of Judgment. On its own, it's kind of meh, but paired with Mannequin's Foot, it allows you to turn your Rites of Judgment into a highway to sneak up on survivors. Though it does take some time to set up, and survivors likely will get one or two gens done by then, but if you can make it work, go for it. So Pyramid Head is definitely one of the stronger killers in the game, roughly in mid to low A tier if you ask me. Rites of Judgment can be a powerful tool for map pressure by using them as a tripwire system, especially with add-ons like Mannequin's Foot, and in the chase they can be used to force survivors off of loops if they don't want to deal with the Torment debuff. Like I said earlier, Punishment of the Damned is great for punishing vaults and pellet drops, or if you can, pull off hard reads which find well, hence why I'm All Ears is so handy. But you can also fake the ability by tapping Rites of Judgment and then letting go when you get close and just go for a melee hit instead. Keep in mind that there is a small delay between cancelling Rites of Judgment and being able to attack. The range attack can also be used to hit multiple survivors as well, so if you think you can hit them, go for it, just watch out for jukes and stuff. The cages are great for dealing with decisive strike or there's another survivor nearby that you can chase afterwards. Just keep in mind that you won't benefit from hook perks either, and it can help other survivors get rid of torment for later. So if you want to save the Mori, just hook them instead. So that's everything I have to say about the Pyramid Boy. He's probably my favorite killer to play, with Spirit just behind him. If I forget anything, be sure to leave a comment about it. And since this is my first time making a video about this, let me know about your thoughts on it. Feedback is always great, and I want to keep making videos like this sometime in the future. So let me know which killer you want next. If you enjoyed, don't forget to give a thumbs up, and if you want to stay up to date with the small chance that I upload on a consistent level, hit the subscribe button. In any case, I'll see you all around. And remember, stay safe, sleep well, and DC if you get the Yamaoka estate. Farewell!